I've been studying um, what I call good judgment for about 25 years now, and some of the work unfolds in pretty artificial laboratory settings, which would be more typical of psychology department research, and other work unfolds more in real-world situations with experts, well-qualified experts, making predictions about outcomes that are important to the success of their enterprises. And um, the, uh, the Good Judgment Project that you're referring to it was an effort to study about 300 experts over about a 20-year span looking at the accuracy of their um, subjective probability judgments about future states of the world. Sometimes those future states of the world might be financial markets, sometimes they might be states of economies, sometimes they might be whether leaders rise or fall, whether governments rise or fall, uh, a, a wide range of issues. We found that uh, experts who had certain styles of thinking uh, were better adapted uh, to deal with a rapidly changing world than experts with other styles of thinking. And we, we called the better adapted experts foxes, and we contrasted the, these foxes with hedgehogs. And uh, the, 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 fo the foxes tended to have uh, a more self-critical, flexible style of thinking. The hedgehogs tended to have a more top-down uh, uh, style of thinking. Um, there's an old epigram that captures the hedgehog fox distinction that goes back about 2,500 years in Greek philosophy. It says that the um, the fox knows many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. One of the distinctive features of the best forecasters in my work on expert judgment was the, their, their, their greater ability and willingness to answer the question, what would it take to convince you you're wrong? Uh, in, in philosophy of science terms, they were, they were, they were what are sometimes called falsificationists. Uh, they, 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 they believed in the importance of um, being specific about boundary conditions on knowledge. It's certainly one that pops up in the philosophies of a lot of very fam famous and prominent business executives as well. I mean, the, the notion of uh, constructive confrontation, for example, is one of the guiding precepts of corporate culture at Intel. The finding that, that people found most surprising from my work on expert judgment, in particular the work on expert political judgment, was that there was somewhat of an inverse relationship between how accurate experts were and how famous they were. Um, that uh, the media tended to be drawn to experts who, who uh, offered very uh, short and sharp sound bites. Um, and those tended to be experts who, in my study, were some, somewhat less accurate. What attracted me most to Penn and the Wharton School, I, I think the short answer would be the PIK program. Uh, there's a tendency for universities, uh, major research universities, to siloize knowledge. Uh, so there's a, si there's, a, there's a research psychology silo, there's a management silo, there's a political science silo. And my research tends to straddle all three of those disciplines. I'm, I'm a research psychologist, but I study political and managerial processes in the real world. So uh, it, it, the possibility of uh, working across all three units was, uh, was therefore especially attractive to me.